timer app using block state management system. So with this, you'd be start, you'd be able to start the timer, and after certain time later, the timer would stop, and you can restart it again just like this. So without further ado, let's get started. Just to go ahead and make sure that you have these three plugins installed: so Equitable, Flutter Block, and Wake Lock. Equitable is for checking our states whether two states are equal or not. Flutter Block is definitely for block management or block state management. And Wake Lock is for keeping the screen alive, but this is optional. Well, first over here, we created an abstract class. This name is a timer state, and here we are extending equitable because this timer state class would be extended by other class, and those classes will have props or properties. And we want to check if two properties are same or not, which means that two values of variables are same or not. In this case, we have declared a variable at the top, which is called elapsed and this is the variable that would be changing over the time over here as you can see so this is the one that we want to play ahead with now over here we have another class which is called timer initial now we'll use this class to emit state and as we do that over here we'll set the value to zero for the first time and then later on we'll call this class and we'll emit this class as well as our state and as we do that, over here, we'll send the value and this value would be changed over the time. And that's why here we say that this prop, which is elapsed at the top is stateful, which means that it should change and that UI should get updated. So here is our class, which is called timer qubit and it extends qubit. Since we are going to use qubit, which is a subset of blocks, so we extend qubit. And at the same time, we mention our stateful class, the class that should hold our data. The data I'm talking about this variable elapsed and this is the data that should be stateful which means that if it changes our UI should know it and our UI would know it through qubit or block and we call the constructor at the same time as we do that we pass a value to the super constructor and at the same time we call this timer initial because of this the value elapsed the variable elapsed would get set to zero and since we are going to use our uh, create a timer so here we have created a timer object and this is the method that we should be calling from our ui using block provider and as we call it we may pass a time now this is a starting time it could be zero it could be any time as you want now here we are also using wake lock .enable because we want to keep our screen alive and then we check the value if we are null or not if time is null then is time is not null then we are going to use whatever the time the user has given and at the same time we emit a state and as i said early as we emit the state we call this class as we call the class whatever the value that is being passed that would be saved over here and then that value would become stateful which means that if we can change it as well as if we do the ui would know about it Anyway, otherwise we set it to zero, so which would be again our initial value. And after that, we call this timer.periodic function, which is the core of this app. Now it takes a duration object, so we have to create one. And then it also takes a callback function. Now duration object over here, it takes seconds, and we are saying that every one second later, call this function. So call this callback function, so that's how you should understand. Now this is our callback function on tick so we separated it from start timer of course you could do it inside over here no problem and here we first take the timer object and then because over here we have already created this state this class so we can check if our state is timer progress which is this one so if we if it is this then we convert, we cast it to a variable and we name it WIP. You can name it anything, it doesn't matter. And then we make sure that it becomes, it is the right state that we want, okay? And then over here, we check the condition. Every five seconds later, if the value is less than five, we are going to add one to our variable. Which What is this variable? Actually, this is the variable that we have defined early at the top over here. So if it's less than five, then we just keep adding to it. And every one seconds later, one is get added to it. Of course, this could, you could change it to any value. It doesn't really matter. So it would be up to like 60 seconds, two minutes or three minutes. And as we add it, so we 
over here emit a new state okay and this state changes the value and we say it over here and if the time is over then we cancel the timer we also disable our with old clock uh, so that our UI can do whatever it likes like close down or dark screen anything like that and then after that we emit our initial state because this initial state would help us to restart our UI from the scratch one more time so so here this is our main function and inside this we have this block provider so block provider is same for qubit and block itself and then we create the qubit or the block and then we find the blocks the block that we created and inside this we have this elevated button which is called start now as we click on this actually it starts the tr timer so this is the function that we have talked about earlier and this function gets called or the method gets called and it enables the timer so the timer ticks every one second later and change the value and as we change the value we could find it so we make sure that our state is timer progress because remember over here we, eventually we are going to emit this class as state we make sure that we have it and if we have it over here we just grab the state and then the related properties in the state itself and we say it so now let's go ahead and start it and we'll see the same value now over here it starts from zero because we do have zero over here so we can start from two let's reload our app and then let's click on the start button and we say it starts from two it goes up to five now of course you can change this value so it would come to our qubit and then let's change it to 10 now one more time we'll click on this and we'll say it starts from 2 and it would go up to 10 and after that we'll see this button the button that we have because our state has been changed so now that we see this start button okay because we fall back to initial condition when our state is over like over here we were checking so once the countdown is done we go to initial state and that state we can find over here and then we can show whatever the ui we want so hopefully it makes sense thank you so much